In this video, we're going to have a look at how to create this nice hover effect over content using bricks. It's really very simple and um, easy to do. So to show you how this works, then what we'll do is we'll create a similar animation, but we'll apply it to the slider below. Head over to bricks and we'll head down to the slider. So that's the slider with the animation effect applied and we're going to head down here to this particular slider and apply the same animation. So to do that, uh, what we'll do then is we'll head over to this top left uh, pseudo classes and we'll select hover. So when it's hovered, we want something to happen to this item. Then I'll head over to transform and in transform, I'm going to look at scale X and scale Y and I'm just going to go up um a very little so when you're working with um scaling it'll be 1.1 1.2 or 0 0.9 0 0.8 you don't want to put in 100 or 200 you just work with very small increments so i'm going to want the scale x and the scale y and that just ensures a uniformity um, when this enlarges so this will then scale it up by 1.1 on the x and the y axis and we can save that and when we head over to the website now and the page refreshes you'll see that we have the animation but it's oh it's a little bit choppy so to smooth that out we then close off the transform and then we head down to the css section and there's already an example of what we need to type in so you'll see um in the writing there it says all 0.2 second is in and there's also a link here to learn more about the css transitions and if you click on that you'll be brought across here to uh, the uh, transition section on this developer.mozilla.org and you'll be brought here to this using transitions and you'll see some of the things that you can do now because we are using bricks a lot of these settings we can set within bricks so the only setting that we really want is the transitions transition setting so that's what we're looking for is that particular code and that looks the same as the example that's provided so i'm going to paste that in we'll just change that then to ease in and once that is done we can reduce the size save and we're doing this all while we're in the hover state and head over to the website the website refreshes and you'll see we now have the ease in but hang on a second it's nice when it enlarges but not so great when it goes back to its normal state so we need to now just go and have a look at making that happen so back to the builder so now we, we we're pretty much done in the hover state so we're just gonna go back to the normal state so we're back to the normal state and we now need to just add in a transition now to the normal state. So we paste in the same transition and we save. Then head over to the website. As soon as that's saved, page will refresh. And now we have ease in and uh, we have an animation opening and closing. Uh, if you're not, if that's a little bit, um, if you'd like it a little bit faster, of course. Um, so maybe when you move on to the next one, uh, you want to leave it opening or closing slowly, but you want it to open up with a little bit more um, speed. Then what we do there is we head back to the pseudo state, and you'll now see that there's a. Oh, let me hit that again. Um, so we click on the element that we want to apply the animation to. I'm going to go to the pseudo state and you'll see that we have this number one which shows us that there's one active state and we can see the little dot so we know that's on the hover and now maybe what we want to do is change the 0 0.5 maybe to 0 0.2 we'll save that so now it'll open a lot faster but it'll slow it'll close slower and so there you see opens fast but when you move off it has that open Right, so that's just then to show you how you can quite easily add animation to various items. We're now going to apply the effect 
to a class and we can then apply that to multiple elements. So we've selected the content element that we're going to apply to and it's going to be the first slide and let's save that. So there are no classes now applied to any of the objects. So if I refresh the page, you will see that nothing happens there. Nothing happens. So we have no classes applied here with any animation. Then I'm going to head back and I'm ready now to create that class. So I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call that um, once again with a prefix by slider. Um, let's call it side the hover. And we're going to save that. So now we are working in that class. So what you'll notice now is that you'll see that there are no settings here. So if I remove that class, you'll see that we have this layout and this border with the little color. And if I apply the slide hover, you will see that nothing has been applied. So the first thing I'm going to do then is head over to transform. Um, now we know that in the normal state we need to set the transform settings as well so the normal transform settings the scale x and y we're going to set those to one and then we also need to set the css animation just going to paste that in and we know that when it goes back to the normal state we want it to be slow and so that is fine so that is now associated with this class so just to show you how that works, if I remove the class, then you'll see that we're now looking at those settings. If we apply the class, you'll now see that the class settings are available to us. Right, now what we need to do is have a look at the hover. So once again, we select the pseudo state and we move over to hover. And on hover now, you'll see that there are no settings applied. So what we'll do then is go to transform and we're going to transform scale x to 1.1 and scale y to 1.1. Then what we're going to do is move down to the CSS. And now we know that when it opens, we want it a bit faster. So we're going to make that 0.2. Right, so now in the hover state, we have now applied that to this particular class as well. Now I'm going to save that. And then we're going to just go and preview that on the website. So on the website, going to refresh. And now you'll see that we have the transition um, on these slides. Right, I can just see on the edges here it's being cut off and I just need to add some padding to the container. But the animation is working just fine, nothing on that slide. Okay, so let's um, go back to the normal state. And those styles have been applied. Now I'm going to move on down to the next slide, which is the sliders on gray. Just a tip, if you need to change the name of your section, you can just double click, type in the name that you want, and the section name is changed. And I'm going to go to that content element, which is this div. So I could also call this slide content, for example. And now what we're going to do is check out the transition and the animation. So nothing applied at the moment. So now we're going to apply that class. Going to click in by dash. I get all my classes. I see slider hover. I apply slider hover and immediately you see the transform icons are visible. And then I save that. Head over to the website. Refresh. Right, so we have the transition there, scroll down, and now I have the transition applied to those items as well. If I want to um, apply that, um, perhaps uh, this is an element I haven't considered, but perhaps I want to apply that to these elements as well. Quite easy then, I'm going to head over to the website, scroll up, go to my element, and you'll see here that that is the post listing element and i need to just select the individual items so um, that would be the individual no okay so we want to apply to this container and so to do that then head over find the 
slider class. You'll see the settings are visible. Save. And now when that is done saving, refresh the page. And now we have that animation applied to this content element as well. So that's how you can quite easily then apply this hover effect to the elements on your website. Um, it looks as though the animation on the um, sliders in gray is slightly different. Let's refresh. So let's just take that from the top. So quick open, slow close. Quick open, slow close. And on the ah. Uh, so that would indicate that there's a different element at play here. So if you do find that you have this anomaly, let's go back to sliders on gray. I'm going to look for the slide content. Right, so I have the class applied. Now if I remove the class, I see that there is some CSS applied here, which might have you know, been left over from a previous um, set of settings. Right now, um, yeah, now I can already see how with that class applied that it's correct. So that's what sometimes happens when you're working um, on, on items and you're checking out or trying different animations after a while it can get confusing. Let's just see if that is saved. So best to, um, once you've um, applied a class, make sure that before you apply it, that any settings relevant is cleared especially if you're just going to apply a class name. We're just waiting for that to save. We'll refresh the page. Right, so now it's the same animation. So now I can quite easily apply that. Now, and now that I have applied that class to everything, um, if I go into any element where that um, hover class is applied and I make a change, so I want to make the ease out perhaps um, just as fast, Right, then we'll save that and head over to the website and refresh that. Quick in, quick out, quick in, quick out. Right, so then you could also apply maybe different classes for different elements, but that's um, quite um, easy then to you know manage the animation on all your elements. Well, I hope you found that useful and thank you for watching.